Is it possible that born-again believers who have been tasked to spread the gospel through the Great Commission can be enemies of this very gospel? My name is Anes Wamboy and you're watching SITAM Church Online. The Bible is very clear concerning the Great Commission. We are told to go out there and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that God has commanded us, and surely he'll be with us to the very end of the age. These are the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. We're also told in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, to go out into all the world and be witnesses of the risen Christ in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Believers are meant to go out there and testify of who Jesus Christ is, of what he has done, that he is the perfect sacrifice of God, that the sins of men have been atoned for, that men need to cease striving to be forgiven through their acts and through their religious works, but can put their hope in Jesus Christ, the one-time perfect sacrifice, who has died and shed his blood on the cross, and human beings have their forgiveness once and for all. However, that very beautiful message could be hindered. Hindered by what? By enemies of the gospel. Now when we say enemies of the gospel, we very clearly think about those people who oppose the gospel. But at times, we believers can be enemies of the gospel. How is that? By living lives that are not worthy according to the gospel. Several times when Paul wrote to the Ephesians, the Corinthians, the Thessalonians, he often wrote this remark in the letters live lives worthy of the gospel live lives worthy of what you've been called and why is this so it is because if the pagans saw them living lives contrary to what they've been called they would cease to believe in this god or they would have several questions about this god how is it that the god of the gospel says live in such pure way but yet these people speak very purely how is it that the god of the gospel says to love one another and yet these people hate one another and you see that the character of the believer can become a hindrance a perfect example of this is the life of david in second samuel chapter 11 and chapter 12. david was meant to be out fighting with the with, with fighting with the Israelite army against the Ammonites. But instead of fighting, he remained behind. And as he remained behind, he was tempted. He saw a naked woman bathing. He called for her and found out that she was married, but he didn't care. He slept with her. This is despite God having given David so many women and given him the gift of marriage. David abused it and committed adultery. And David did not care. The woman got pregnant. And when the woman got pregnant, David tried to cover up the sin. So what did he do? He called for the husband to come all the way from the battleground. The husband was named Uriah the Hittite. He was from the land of the Hittite. He was not an Israelite. He was not a local man. He was a foreigner. He had left his people, come all the way to Israel, and become one of them, Uriah the Hittite. And he had served David, showed his loyalty to David. And yet, despite all this, David slept with his wife. And not only did David do that, David tried to get Uriah to sleep with Bathsheba so that Uriah would think that the baby was his. But that did not happen. Uriah was so faithful and went to guard the city gate. And so David got Uriah drunk, caused Uriah to sin against the Lord. And after that, Uriah still did not go sleep with Bathsheba. What did David resort to? David decided to cover up his sin by killing Uriah the Hittite. David had Uriah at the battlefront delivered a letter to Joab through Uriah commanding that Uriah be killed and when the battle was fierce they left Uriah at the forefront with several other men and Uriah was struck down and he died. Uriah lost his life simply because David was trying to cover up his sin and after that there are many men who also died alongside Uriah he did not die alone so there are many other families that became fatherless simply because David was trying to cover up his sin and after that David took his wife and brought her in and pretended to console her. Now when you read all this, the Bible says the Lord was displeased with what David had done. And the Lord sent the prophet Nathan to warn David. Now all this angered the Lord and the Lord used Nathan to show David his iniquity. 
And when David found out that he had done such harm, this is what the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Verse 14, How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. What is the prophet Nathan saying here? He's saying, David, by this wicked act, the Ammonites, the Perizzites, all those other tribes that do not believe in the one true God, they shall see this wicked, malicious iniquity. And they will say, is that the God of David? Is that David, a man after God's own heart? And they will blaspheme the name of God because of David. Here is a classic example of people who are meant to be reached out to, people who are meant to receive the truth of the gospel, people who are meant to receive the truth of the God of Israel, but instead they cannot receive it because the character of David has tarnished that opportunity. How many times do unbelievers see you as a believer, speak out of turn, not control your tongue, not control your mouth, not control your actions? How many times have you done things that have just reflected a devilish character, a character that is not pleasing to God? God says, don't give the enemies of God an occasion to blaspheme him. Don't show a life that is not transformed. If your life has truly, truly been transformed by the gospel, if you have truly experienced the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pray that you may remember that people are always watching. Remember that people are looking to you as their testimony. Some people will never read a Bible. You may be the only Bible some people read. Some people may never go to church, but you will be the church that some people only come to. Live a life worthy of the gospel. As we spread the gospel and as we focus on missions during this missions month, I want you to think about your personal integrity, your personal character. Many a times we complain about our leaders and the character of them out there, but charity begins at home. As for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. Let the gospel be seen, not first out there in the world, but primarily in my home. And then perhaps the prophecy shall be fulfilled that the glory of the Lord shall cover the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. And this word of the gospel shall reach the entire world, the entire earth, and then the end shall come. Thank you very much for watching. If this video has blessed you or has challenged you, please leave a like, please leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and share it with your friends and family so that they too can experience what you have. My name is Anes Wamboe, and you're watching Sitam Church Online.